this is just the latest scandal affecting Credit Suisse going back several years, really, but certainly in the past year. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's something that uh, it, the, the bank just really can't shake off. Um, it's announced you know, these, these big uh, executive departures today. There's also been a slew of more mid-level managers who are, who are departing. Um, as you mentioned, there's a, a huge dividend cut. It's, it's halting its buyback program. Uh, and uh, you know the shares are down 25% in the last month. It's it's they're hoping these dramatic moves are really going to sort of end this period for the for the bank. But um, you know history tells us that it could just be another scandal waiting around the corner. Yeah, I mean, it seems like there are multiple corners and multiple scandals for Credit Suisse, at least in re recent years. Uh, one of our colleagues just had a wall kind of showing the timeline. The wall was full, Owen. The wall was full. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, when we look at these departures, these two people were actually just told last year by the CEO to kind of overhaul this group and change things after some of these other scandals. So if you just overhaul it, how do you overhaul again and fix the problem? Absolutely. Uh, you know, Thomas Gottstein, the CEO who, who uh, came in place just over a year ago, and I'm sure your viewers may remember the circumstances he joined. There was a very ugly corporate spying scandal where his predecessor, Tijan Tiam, left. Uh, Thomas Gottstein came in, supposed to be a kind of a safe pair of hands, a um, bit of a lifer at Credit Suisse. Uh, and that summer, last summer, he he brought in an overhaul. He actually uh, gave uh, Lara Warner and Brian Chin bigger roles. He uh, he gave them more responsibility, um, combining risk and compliance on Warner's side and, and making uh, Brian Chin the overall head of the investment bank. Uh, and we're seeing, you know, within just over sort of six, seven months later, those two are the, the four people for, for this latest scandal. Um, as you say, how do you, do you sort of keep restructuring this? There are, there are kind of inherent problems within the bank. And clearly that last uh, set of reforms, that last revamp, either it hasn't worked or it hasn't worked yet. So um, it's, you know, there's a lot of pressure on Thomas Gottstein to see what he does next. So when we're looking at a, a chart of Credit Suisse shares right now. They're actually up about a half a percent. Um, going forward, how does this impact Credit Suisse, the perception of its prime service? And how does this impact other European banks? Yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating. I mean, uh, as you say, up, up slightly today, I think there was a lot of expectation there could have been a bigger hit, but also uh, it, it shows the, the actual investment bank has done very well this year. So, um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, I'm hearing from people inside the, the bank that actually they're seeing this as something they can maybe uh, shake off. It's, it's a big deal. They're very embarrassed and very upset about it. They're looking to shake it off and, and maybe progress into to the rest of the year on the back of maybe some, some stronger results. Um, in terms of their prime brokerage business, uh, we've seen an internal mail where several uh, senior people there have have, uh, have left and been replaced. Uh, I think it sets a lot of question marks about that business within the investment bank. It's a, it's a niche industry, uh, you know, serving hedge funds and other kind of investors doing their kind of their equities business for them. Uh, and Credit Suisse weren't the only bank to get stung by Archegos. There are, you know, several Wall Street banks, several big uh, Asian, Japanese, uh, Hong Kong banks who have been really, really hit by this. And I think a lot of them will be looking at their prime brokerage businesses and thinking, is this a business we want to be in? Or are there maybe some, some more risk controls we need to be putting in around that to, to safeguard a little bit? You know, Owen, you're taking some words right out of my mouth. We just showed Nomura uh, shares down about 17% since this scandal broke out. Anything else coming up for them? How do you see their business being impacted? Well, Nomura is a funny one because this is a, a, a big deal for Nomura. Uh, that this isn't a, the, the sort of the story you would typically associate them being involved in a you know a sort of a high-profile international global sc scandal. For them, you know, certainly in, in Japan, this has gone down very badly. Our colleagues over there have been so sort of very close to the action there, and um, it, it it just seems I think that they've been scorched. You know, for Credit Suisse, this is undoubtedly a big a big deal, but it's one of of several, uh, you know, some of the Wall Street banks who are involved in this, they've, they've kind of been down this path before. For someone like Nomura, this is something that, that is going to take a, a big recovery from um, because this isn't, this isn't sort of the day-to-day -day activity for them. Owen, we've got to let you go. But one quick question, just a yes or no, if you wouldn't mind. Um, do you see CEO Thomas Godstein surviving this scandal after all the other scandals that this bank has had in recent years? In one word, yes. But uh, will he survive the next one? Uh, who knows? Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.